Hi, it's time for another math easy solution. Turn to discuss further into trigonometric substitution for integrals and now look at example 5, uh, which is the same example I covered in my last video, except we're going to use part 2 of it, and which is solving it instead of trig substitution, hyperbolic trig substitution. That's what we'll use. Basically, to recap, in my last video I solved this following example, which is integral of dx over square root x squared minus a squared, where a is greater than 0. I used the following trig substitution to solve it, x equals a times secant theta, and the answer we got was basically this right here, ln of absolute value of x plus square root x squared minus a squared uh, plus c1, where the c1 is a constant, that equals to c minus ln a, where c is also a constant, and ln a is a constant that arose from the derivation. So now there's actually a different way to solve the same integral I just wanted to do because it's pretty interesting. Basically, if we consider only when x is greater than 0, yeah, if we only consider this case where x is greater than 0, then another method of solving this example is by using the following trig, a hyperbolic trig substitution. Uh, uh, basically, that's right here, which is uh, x is equal to a times it by hyperbolic cosine of t. And the reason we're using uh, x is greater than 0 in this case is because if you recall the definition of hyperbolic uh, cosine, this just equals to e to the power of t plus e to the power of negative t divided by 2. And this is, well, always going to be greater than uh, 0. In fact, if you put 0 inside here, this e to the, t, e to the 0 is 1, e to the negative uh, 0 is, is 1, so you'll have actually, uh, this is going to be, yeah, 2 divided by 2, so this is greater than equal to uh, 1, actually. So that's why in this case we're going to be using greater than uh, 0, uh, and and since this is symmetric, if you're writing a computer program, you could just, you'll just multiply by 2, because whenever you put a negative number inside x, it's the same as if you put a positive, because you're squaring it. But since we're dealing with a 1 divided by, we're only going to be considering uh, the point where basically it's greater than, in this case I'll the racist, so basically just greater than 1. So you can equal to 1 because of this part here. Yeah, because if cosine ht equals to 1, then we have x is equal to a and basically 1 divided by, well, x squared minus a squared, that equals to 1 divided by 0, and this is, we can't have that, that's, so that's not defined. So we have to make sure that this function is greater than 1. So now if we were to, uh, so, we, so basically the goal is to simplify the square root, but first let's graph this out. So I'm going to graph right here x uh, squared minus a squared, and I'm going to do the sim same thing I did with uh, my other video on one-to-one -one functions. So to show you here, if we were to graph this, if you put in uh, x is a, uh, put a in there, we'll get here. Well, I'm going to draw a, uh, not a filled in there because we can't have it equal to a. And then this will just expand like that. I'll make it smaller, actually. This just expands. And this right here will be on the left side there. And this is at a, and this is at negative a. So this is the graph of this square root function. Just a, it's just a square root on both sides, and it's always positive because of this uh, x squared. So as you can see right here, we have this domain. In this case, this is x is, well, greater than a. So we can't have it equal to a right here. And we're only going to consider this right side. So now if we were to graph this same, uh, this is actually, yeah, this is x, not t. So if we were to graph now versus t on the top side, and now if you recall from earlier video on how to graph this hyperbolic cosine, this just looks something like this. This point right here would be a. Again, we don't we can't equal it. And then it goes like that and it keeps going and further out. So that's like that. So as you can see right here, we have the same issue of one to one issue like I showed in my other video. So we need to avoid this one-to-one, -one. but as you can see, the domain of this part right here, this function, this is well x is greater than a. So we've maintained this part when we're using this substitution. 
So, yeah, thus if I were to put it in writing, basically, let's write this here, we need to ensure that this function a times cosine, hyperbolic cosine of t, which is the uh, hyperbolic trig we're substituting in, has a one-to-one -one relationship uh, while maintaining the domain of x. So one-to-one -one relationship, this is with x right here, while maintaining this domain x is greater than a, which we're substituting. And now this function right here, this is just, well, a hyperbolic cosine of t. So that's the function we're substituting. And as you can see, we could easily do that. All we do is consider only this part right here, where t is greater than 0. So that's all we need to do. Yes, yeah, so thus t is greater than 0. So we impose on that, and we can, so we're only going to consider this top side, and we won't have a uh, and then we'll have a one-to-one -one relationship. So we won't have these two component. Then also make sure to watch my earlier video on uh, sub trig substitution and one-to-one -one functions. So now, yeah, now we can go ahead and simplifying this the square root function. So again, now recall the identity which I covered a while ago in my earlier videos. Basically, this one right here, hyperbolic cosine. Uh, squared of t minus hyperbolic sine squared of t equals to 1. So if we recall this, so what we could do right here, we could have now this square root x squared minus a squared. If we substitute our a squared, uh, yeah, our a times hyperbolic cosine squared of t. So if we put the x in here, which is right here. So if we just go and throw this inside this x right here, we get this minus now a squared. Now if we factor the a squareds out, we get a squared hyperbolic uh, uh, cosine squared of t minus 1. And now this, if we just rearrange this, put this to this side, move this to the right, this just equals to hyperbolic uh, sine squared of t. And now if we simplify this, this square root of a squared, that's just a, times it by square root of sine, hyperbolic sine of t equals 2. Now a absolute value of sine h of a hyperbolic sine of t. And the reason it's absolute value is because uh, this can be negative. This sine, uh, sine can be negative, uh, but we have to be positive because of this square root. So anything inside the square root has to be well greater than zero right here. So uh, yeah, real numbers have to be greater than zero inside the square root, greater than or equal to zero. Uh, but we know that t is greater than zero, and if you recall, basically definition of hyperbolic sine of t, that's just it's hyperbolic sine of t is equal to e to the uh, t minus e to the negative t over um, yeah over two. Yeah, and the graph of this is also, if you recall this one, if this is t, this is sine h of t, it looks something like this. So as you can see from here, whenever you have positive in here, if you're positive, if you put in, let's say, uh, 100 here, e to the power of 100 minus e to the power of negative 100, this will go to like close to zero, so, and this will be really high up. So basically, whenever you have t is greater than zero, then we have, well, uh, sine of t is greater than zero. Sine h of t is greater than zero. So we can remove this absolute value. So this just equals to a hyperbolic sine of t. So now that we have this part, we also know that yeah, we also know that, well, if we have x equals to a cosine h of t, we know the derivative also, if we recall from my earlier video, this is going to equal to, well, just a hyperbolic sine h, yeah, hyperbolic sine of t, and then dt, you see the differential there. So we have this from my earlier video, you can see a video link for the proof of this one. So now if we throw this all together, we have dx over square root, x squared minus a squared, this equals to the dx, we just put that in here, so that's a sine h of t dt, and now this square root x squared minus a, that's, well, just this one right here. So that equals to a sine 
h of t. Now this just cancels out. We're left with integral of dt, which just equals 2. Well, if you take the integral of this, that's just going to be, well, t. Yes, yeah, so that's just integral of t. And now we have to always add a constant c. So now we have to, well, get back to the x variable. So get back to x. And we know that, well, x is equal to a hyperbolic cosine of t. So then if we rewrite this, hyperbolic cosine of t is equal to x over a. So now we could just use the inverse hyperbolic cosine of t. So the inverse of it, you can see the also the inverse more on this in the video link below. This will just equal to, uh, yeah, this is going to be, actually now I'm, I'm writing this a uh, bit off. Basically t now is equal to uh, just the inverse function of this. And that's that's this is all this is by definition of inverse function. This is just a one right here. An inverse function is basically just switching this variable with these ones inside, and the, so that's the inverse of it. So now when we plug this in, we get now dx uh, yeah, square root x squared minus a squared equals two. Plug in the t. This is hyperbolic. I mean inverse hyperbolic cosine of x over a and now plus c. Now compare this with the answer we got in my last video square root x squared minus a squared this equals 2 from my last video basically we scroll back up this is ln x plus square root x squared minus a squared plus c1 so it looks different but I'll show you that it's the exact same. So this equals to uh, x right here plus square root x squared minus a squared plus c1 where c1 is equal to c minus ln a. And these are all constants. So so now these ones uh, are, so this looks different but this is actually the exact same thing. And to prove this recall from again recall from my earlier video that if you were to write this inverse hyperbolic um, cosine function at, in terms of logarithmic functions this would be equal to well basically just recall inverse hyperbolic t and this equals to actually I'll put x in, instead I'll use the x variable this just equals to ln of yeah ln of x plus square root x squared minus 1 right here. So that's what this equals to, and you can see a proof of this also in the video link below. But now if we were to plug in, well, cos x over a, so if we plug this instead, we get here we get ln of absolute value x over a plus square root, and now we have an x squared over a squared minus 1. All absolute valued. So now what we could do is multiply a squared and a squared on the right side here, so we're not changing it, just on this 1. So we get now ln of x over a plus square root. This is going to be x squared over, well, there's a common denominator now. So x squared minus a squared all over a squared. So what now we could do is just take this out of there, just square root out, so we get ln of x over a plus, well, 1 over a right here, square root x squared minus a squared. So now what we could do is basically uh, we could rewrite this like this, and then you, we're going to have to use some law, logarithmic properties or natural log properties. So now this is over a, and now recall again in my earlier video on logarithmic properties, you could subtract these. So this equals to just ln x plus square root x squared minus a squared minus now with this ln of this underneath this den denominator, which is going to be ln a. So now that we have this, we could throw this back into the function. The dx, this is square root x squared minus a squared, this equals 2 hyperbolic cosine, in, yeah, hyperbolic inverse cosine of x over a plus c, where this equals 2 
let's write this right here. So that equals to this. So we throw this inside. So we get ln of x plus square root x squared minus a squared. Absolute value, now we have a uh, minus ln a plus c. So as you can see, now finally, just rewrite this x squared minus a squared absolute value. Now we write this as plus c1, where c1 is just going to be equal to, well, these, these two, c minus ln a. So these are just constants. And as you can see, this is the exact same thing that we have over here. Yeah, and this is a pretty extensive example. Yes, yeah, so now on an important note on this example that we learned is basically as shown in this example, hyperbolic trig substitutions can be used in place of trig, and sometimes they even lead to simpler answers, but we still usually use trig substitution because trig functions and trig identities are much more familiar than hyperbolic trig functions and identities. And you could tell from in this video, I always re had to recall stuff from previous videos and yeah, as opposed to uh, trig functions where it's more familiar to many people. Anyways, that's all for today. Hopefully you learned from this really extensive uh, part two of this example on this. And like always, you could download these exact notes in the link below. And thanks for watching and stay tuned for another math easy solution.